made it to the escape because park here in Peru. We're parked right back there in the uh, boom docking area. We're going to do our laundry. Huh? I see the beautiful scenery oh, behind us. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Look at look at the scenery. It's absolutely beautiful area. This is a nice park. It's a, it's an escapees co-op park. You have to be an escapees member to stay here. Boondocking is first night free, and then for members it's seven bucks a night after that. We're gonna go do all of our laundry. We got our bedding to go first. Uh, then we'll throw our clothes in, shower, and uh, settle in for the day. There's a root beer float social here at the meeting room later on this afternoon. We might join in, you think? Wow, look at the sunset on the mountains over there. That's beautiful. Last night at the uh, Escapees RV Park here in Pahrump, Nevada. We're parked uh, just on the other side of that van right there. There's a bunch of vans in the in the row. And that's gorgeous. Yeah. Yep. Gorgeous night. Great weather. We're taking a side trip to a town called Rhyolite outside of Beatty, Nevada. It's, it's, ghost, town. it's ghost Town. We can go see a ghost town. Uh, our friend Catherine recommended we come here, seeing so you know how we're going to be right in the area. Uh, it's on Atlas Obscura, so Sherry's been reading about it. Let's go check it out. Real quick little history about Rhyolite. I'm going to read from the Atlas Obscura uh, notes here. Uh, founded in 1904 and dead by 1916, Rhyolite was one of several short-lived boom towns from the late gold rush era. People were drawn to the desert on the edge of Death Valley by the promise of gold found amongst quartz in local mines. And by 1906, the town had all the promising indicators of permanence, with lar the largest population in the area. Uh, let's see. According to the National Park Service, the town immediately boomed with buildings springing up everywhere. One building was three stories tall and cost $90,000. Back in like 1904, 1906, 90000 bucks is a lot. Uh, there are hotels, stores, a school for 250 children, an ice plant, two electric plants, foundries and machine shops, uh, and even, even a miners' union hospital. Uh, in 1907, the financial markets got a little weird. Uh, Rhyolite began to falter. The mine closed in 1911, and in 1916, the lights went out forever in Rhyolite. Very, very interesting. Um, let's have a look around. This is kind of cool. This is the bottle house. I'll walk around the back here in a second. Uh, just want to read here real quick. Real quick, The Tom Kelly bottle house is one of the few remaining examples of bottle house architecture in the U.S. Uh, basically, wood is scarce and expensive. Miners often built their houses with whatever was cheap and readily available. In many cases, it was glass bottles. Uh, they're used like bricks. Um, they're mortared with adobe. Bottle houses are great in hot climates because they're cool in the summer, hold heat in the winter, and allow for natural light. This particular house was built in 1906 by Tom Kelly, an Australian-born stonemason turned gold miner. There's over 50,000 bottles in this, in this structure. He would pay local children 10 cents for a wheelbarrow full of bottles. Uh, that equates to about $3 in 2021 money. The building cost about $2,500, with most of the money going for wood and trim. Um, so let's go walk around and have a look. It looks like old beds back here. I've got this uh, fenced off. We can't actually go up to the house. That's really cool. A couple of movies were filmed here. Uh, Air Mail was one of them, uh, I think in the 20s. This is the back wall for the building. Apparently during one of the movies uh, that was filmed here, the film crew took down a part of the back wall for all of their uh, camera equipment and everything, and then they rebuilt it. Neat. More things out here. Look, what are all these? Is this like a dog house? What, what's out here? Well, there's all kinds of other things out here made from broken glass, like little glass art. This was an old store. Porter's General Store, I think it said, 1906. Let's see what we got here. stuff down there too. Uh, Porter Brothers store. Uh, yeah, wow. A little photo here from 1909. Really cool. Uh, that was the school where that car is. There's uh, foundational remains of their Union Hall, the Miners Union Hall. 
cool. And one thing I probably should mention is look at the view they had from this town. Wow, this is awesome. This is really awesome. All right, let's go read about some more things. Apparently this store in the hay in its heyday was like the largest employer of people in the town other than the, the mines. Uh, and it had Christmas displays that rivaled big city stores. This is an Overbury building. Uh, let's see, I guess it's just a gentleman's name, John Overbury. Uh, one of the first general purpose buildings of Riley, the largest stone building. It housed a stock brokerage firm, the First National Bank of Rhyolite, a dentist, and attorney's offices. Okay, John Overbury building. To be perfectly honest with you, I expected us to be the only ones here. I did not expect this to be crowded. <laughs> this is crazy. There's so many people here. We're all vying for spots to read the placards and get good pictures. This is a really cool building. Look how that brickwork is just hanging on up there. Three stories. Yep. Let's see what this used to be. So this is the uh, the we're, Cook we're, Bank building. Yeah, we're here. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we're in the yeah. Where there the dog. Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> or cat. Dog. That's really cool. Uh, it's one of the most iconic buildings in Rhyolite and is one of the most photographed ruins in Nevada. So the Cook Bank building. Okay, so reading about this, the bank was open for less than two years before the town died off. Wow, that's wild. They had a train depot here. Uh, the Las Vegas and Tonopah Railroad Depot was completed in June of 1908, around the same time that Rhyolite began its slow decline. Wow. Wow. How awesome is that? Look at all those buildings. Holy I know, cow. I know. Yeah, look at the, uh, look at all the buildings. I mean, that was the town. Wow. That's wild, huh? Uh, Rhyolite service, it was serviced by three railroads, the Las Vegas and Tonopah, the Tonopah and Tidewater, and the Bullfrog Goldfield lines. Amazing, amazing. It was a big, was a big deal for a young mining town to be serviced by one railroad, but three railroads were almost unheard of. Wow. Very, very cool. An old train car here, like an old caboose. It's made out of wood. Wow. This is the train depot. This is the side that faces the, where the town would be. Park behind it. Let's, uh, let's walk around. Have a look. Surrounded by chain link fence, you cannot get up close and personal with any of the uh, you know, big ruins like this or the glass house. That's awesome though. On the road going up to the ghost town, this is the Goldwell Open Air Museum. Uh, yeah, no kidding, huh? A wagon of some sort. Wow. Uh, the thing that caught our eye driving in were these ghost-like figures here. Again, I'm reading from Atlas Obscura. Um, where am I here? Conceived in 1984 by the late Belgian-Polish sculptor Albert Zalaski, the Last Supper beckons visitors to the Goldwell Open Air Museum like a demonic vision born of heat stroke and satanic enchantment. <laughs> Inspired what he found to be a striking resemblance between the Mojave Desert and the Holy Land's scenic vistas, the sculptor casts these 12 ghosts in an echo of Leonardo da Vinci's painting of Christ's Last Supper. Let's go check this out. It's actually pretty cool. 
It's actually really cool. Um, I guess this is all fiberglass. That's pretty neat. All right, well, this is the museum. It's closed. I've got a little brochure here. Very neat. Uh, there's a labyrinth in the ground there. How cool. That's just, what a great idea, huh? morning from Tonopah. Beautiful day. Uh, we ate dinner last night at the uh, the Bank Club and Chinese Kitchen, which is right there. The red building right there. Red roof building. Really good, good food. Like, really good food. And great size portions. Um, kind of funny, we walked in the door that said entrance and it takes you right into the casino side. And then you walk through to the very small dining area for the restaurant. And, uh, there's a no, no smoking policy, and there's really no separation between the two. So we went completely um, against our better judgment normally, and you know stayed and, and ate dinner. And I'm glad we did because it was really good. Uh, anyway, we're taking Bailey out here for a stroll or along the edge of the parking lot here, just a dirt lot, and we're gonna start our day. It's 43 degrees, as says the sign right here, and it's 6:45 in the morning. Just stopped for gas here at uh, Rebel Oil Company in Tonopah. They are the cheapest gas around. Uh, it was 370. Everything in town is 390, 398, so it's a lot higher. Uh, Love's down the road is 419. So this is the cheapest gas around. So if you are in Tonopah, Nevada, find Rebel Oil Company. <laughs> Just back here on a dirt road. We came here a couple years ago, thought, wow, where are we going? These dirt roads. Uh, back here on a, on a dirt road. Uh, they've upgraded their pumps since we were here last. They were the old school pumps and they've got nice new pumps now. They take a credit card at the pump. Um, open 24 hours, I, I would assume, with the credit card reader. So, good find. Sherry found that for us. Good find, Sherry. So we're visiting with our friend Aaron, who is fostering this little guy. Yes. And we just like fell in love with him. So, you guys, I think we're doing a thing. How crazy is that? I think we're doing a thing. Four months old. Yep. Two dogs in a van. Oh, boy. A puppy. He's a dachshund mix of some sort. Paperwork said he was a chihuahua something mix. Boxer. 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 Chihuahua boxer. But I don't think there's much chihuahua uh, in there. Dachshund, I think he's it's long. dachshund. He's long and lean. We'll get better video and picture of him here soon but this is his first time in the van we're just testing the waters here bailey's being very good she's pulled out some of her toys, mm -hmm. Show them toys. yep shown on the ropes here he's pretty Show he's pretty low key right now mm -hmm. we'll see and we'll keep you posted yes but this might be a new member of the family Baxter's first day on the leash. We're calling him Baxter now. Good boy, Bax. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, hi, buddy. Hi, boy. Hi, hi boy. Let's go potty. Let's go potty. Oh, oh big stretch. Good boy. Go with Bailey. Bailey's pumping. Sunrise from Aaron's place here. What a beautiful morning. Well, Baxter ate his breakfast. He did? <laughs> Whoa, bud. He ate his breakfast. He's been a good boy this morning. He slept all through the night, no issues. What a fantastic first night we had. Ooh, Bailey's playing tug. <laughs> They're about Yay! Yeah, Yay! Actually, these two. Yeah. Nobody usually plays tug with <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Little dog's got the big toy! Whoa! <laughs> She's showing them all how it's done. Wow, bud! Look at you, Baxter! Baxter got it! Good job, boy! Good job! Good job. And now Bailey and Donnie are playing tug. Good yeah, job. I have no idea what's happening. Yeah, good job. You gonna tug? Tug. 
Get it. Get it, baby. Yeah, he's playing. He's kept himself pretty busy. There have been other dogs here always. Whoa, get it, Bailey. <laughs> That's so good. He's got a good boy. He's got a collection of bones up there now. What do you got? Oh, you collect? Oh, he does. He does. Look, yeah, he's, he's, got, he's got a collection of, collection of chew bones up there. I love it. We're watching him run. That's what Tracy are going. That's a dog. Good boy. Good boy. This is Baxter's first shopping. First shopping experience. I'm trying to get a little harness for him. Trying to find some sort of temporary harness. Well, just, yeah, because he's going to grow, so. Yeah. He's like, I don't know what you're doing. But I'm trying to be patient. You're being very good, boy. My little mind. Very good. Sensory overload. Yep. What do you think, Baxter? Still? Yes. Is this one a pain? No, I was just trying to size oh. it for him. Oh. No. <laughs> I think we should uh, get a shopping cart and put a bed in there and just set him in there. Make it a little up. easier. Butt up. Woo! Butt up. There you go. He says, Butt no, up. the floor is slippery. Whatever. Whatever. Deal with it. All right, Bax. I think Baxter, what do you got? You got a harness, you got a collar. Don't come towards me. You got a leash? You got a hauler? <laughs> you have a halter, a collar, a leash, Whoa. some puppy, puppy food. food. We can't find a crate. Yeah, but we can't find a jacket. Can't find a jacket. So yeah. we'll do that later. But so you're right, doing good. Right now we're he's doing good on his first shopping. Pretty good. He's doing good walking on a leash, aren't you? You're doing good walking on a leash. Yes, you are. We are driving through the Lake Tahoe area to visit um, some of Sherry's family in Auburn, California. And I've never been to Lake Tahoe or driven through here. This is North Lake Tahoe. Holy cow, you guys. Wow, look at the color of that water down there. Oh my gosh. Wow. Uh, this is the first pull off here we're parked up there first pull off that we've had a great view I'm sure there's many more to come I just have to get out and look at this wow walking around Lake Tahoe wow I know that's amazing can you tell from there it's clear it's gorgeous wow so we did a little illegal turn into a viewpoint parking lot here Get back out. Yeah, I don't know. You're not supposed to take a left to go back out, and that's how we got to go, but we'll figure it out. Holy smokes, you guys. This is gorgeous. And little man's doing good. Oh, he's pooping. Yay! Oh, good boy. We stopped at a boat launch here in the Lake Tahoe area for lunch. Bailey. Haley's doing her thing in the water. And Baxter's not sure. He's, I'm not sure what you're doing. He's watching Bailey and he's not quite sure. Checking out other people. He's very curious. I'm guessing that's pretty darn cold. Going in? Cool. I don't know. So um, what's what's Bailey doing? She's all wet. She's wet. Alright, well now we, <laughs> he's got okay. He's got the he's got the runaround uh, with the leash thing down pat. He's doing really well though for his first day on leash. Look at you, first day Lake Tahoe. Jeez. Wow. What a way to go, buddy. Yeah. What a way to go there, Baxter. All right. Oh, I suppose I should get some video of the scenery. Yeah. Because it's just beautiful. Wow. No wind. Temperatures are just perfect. They just put the dock on. Oh, oh that's, is that what they did? Mm -hmm. Okay, they just put the dock on. I'm going to be opening up for the season before we know it. Good time of year to visit. All right. She's paley. <laughs> if, if we let you go, you'd swim, wouldn't you? you crazy dog. All right. We're going to hit the road again. Here we are at the regional park uh, just outside of Auburn. Or actually, we're in Auburn. Yeah, this is beautiful. Going for a little stroll. 
what a gorgeous park. Uh, we parked at the lot just up there a little bit. And we're gonna walk around the perimeter. Get this guy some exercise. Baxter. Baxter. Baxter boy. Good boy. We got ducks. Yeah, good job. Ducks and Well, we thought we should officially introduce Baxter to you guys and uh, let you know a little bit about how he came to be in the family. We have a new puppy. Oh my gosh. So he's five months old. He is a Boston Terrier Chihuahua Dachshund mix, possibly. So he's got, he's got a lot going on in there. He, he uh, kind of has a uh, temperament and mannerisms of a dachshund. He kind of looks a little bit like a dachshund with the nice short legs, long body. He's adorable. He's rough and tumble. He's very rough and time tumble. He uh, loves to snuggle. He's a cuddle bug too. He was born in Washington State, but we got him in Neva Carson City. Nevada. Nevada. Yep. So our friend Aaron helps with pet rescues and he was part of the Pronto Pup Pet Rescue in Washington. There were seven dogs from that pet rescue that were brought down to the Carson City area for an adoption event. Uh, all seven of those dogs, or six of the seven dogs were adopted out. He was not. He had three potential families that fell through for various reasons. Yep. Yeah. And, and, then, and then we showed up at Aaron's and he was there. Yes. yes. Uh, I think he probably waited for us to he arrive. He, he said, waiting. I don't wanna go with those three people. I wanna wait for these people. He is Bailey approved. Yeah, Bailey, Bailey absolutely adores him. She's a lot in teacher mode right now, which is wonderful. Uh, but she, boundaries. Yep, but, but she actually has been playing with him uh, a little bit, which is excellent. So we're having a good time there. He's a good traveler. A wonderful traveler. Uh, he spends most of the time on Sherry's lap, on a little bed on her lap, but he's learning to uh, kind of be by himself in the back. He, he cr crates up at night, He does no problem. crate up, no problem. Sleeps through the night, which is wonderful. And, and we don't want to give him complete free reign of the van quite yet. He's not fully house trained, house broken. Don't trust him quite yet in that So area. we need to make sure we're taking him out for frequent walks, making sure he's going potty every, you know, every time we stop, he's going out and we're stopping a lot more frequently. So our travel is a lot slower than uh, a normal pace. But that's good because we all get to stop and take breaks. That's right. So that's, um, that's Baxter. That's it, we have a new man in our life. In a nutshell, right there. Here's the boy. Welcome to the family, Baxter.